Welcome to another original edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It is the 27th day of March 2012 on this Tuesday night edition. I'm Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, coming up, incredible propaganda by the music sensation Katy Perry as she shills for the military industrial complex. This even got the mainstream media calling it propaganda because it's so naked and over the top ridiculous. That's coming up. And then an in depth investigative report, man on the street with Patrick Henningsen, Darren McBreen, John Bound, and our team from last week at the South by Southwest event, where they went out and uh, talked to the public to investigate and discover if they were buying into the 2012 hype. And I'm encouraged to tell you and give you a hint, most people are not buying into the hype. The globalist propaganda is starting to wear thin. That report, is coming up. But first, let's get into some of the news. A lot of it's stuff that's being covered in the mainstream. A lot of it isn't. We're here to focus on all of it as we defend liberty and resist tyranny. Always teleprompter free. The views you see here, the ideas are mine and my crew's original research and analysis and commentary. News, the First Amendment at its best. That was the motto of my show. 17 years ago on talk radio for a year or two was the First Amendment at its best. Okay, continuing uh, into the news here. Here's a headline out of Natural News. Insane Michigan government announces plan to destroy ranch livestock based on hair color and arrest hundreds of ranchers as felons. Now, because we have an old family ranch in East Texas, I understand this problem clearly all over the country and all over North America for that matter, there is an epidemic problem taking place with feral hogs. But normal breeds of domesticated pigs get out, they interbreed, and in just a matter of years, they begin to grow long hair, tusk, because they're rooting naturally to uh, eat insects and other things uh, that are in the ground, in the soil. So what does government do in Michigan? Instead of saying open season, kill these things, encouraging citizens to shoot them when they see them, because I've actually uh, talked about shooting feral hogs before and gotten phone calls and seen emails saying, how dare you shoot animals out of season? That's illegal. There is no season on them. They're an invasive species like fire ants. The answer is get citizens to start killing them. Like when wolves were out of control, you know, killing people and livestock, folks, cut their numbers back. In fact, cut them back too much to where they're almost extinct in many areas. The point is, not extinct across the country or the world, but you know, in certain areas that they were, they're no longer in those ranges to be technical. Instead, the Michigan uh, has come out with new regulations w with their Bureau of Land Management saying that they're gonna come out with bureaucrats onto your pig farms especially the uh, open air free range area where it's large areas. We, we had this on our ranch uh, back in the 50s during a big drought they had. Couldn't keep cattle then, so they went to uh, free range hogs. And all it is is you have uh, the pig wire, pig fence around an area, and then the pigs basically live in that area, and then you also bring them slop uh, and food and things like that. Or you go to the local moonshiner and get them to give you the uh, leftovers of their uh, sour mash that they're producing, and you feed that to the pigs. So I know all about this. And they're saying they're gonna give them felony charges, they're gonna arrest them if there's any black hair or red hair on the pigs. Now, I was just at the Texas uh, Austin Livestock Radio Show a week and a half ago with my children. We go every year, they like to look at the pigs and cows and sheep. I mean, most of the breeds of pig they had there had black hair or red hair on them. In fact, I marveled at one breed of pig, a big old fat red one I thought was you know, cute and the kids thought was cute. That would be illegal under this rule. I mean, it's so wide that they're saying that according to, to what they think, if it looks like you're keeping feral hogs, which are genetically identical to you know, the regular domesticated pig, that they're gonna kill them on the spot, your livestock that you're selling, and that then they're gonna arrest you. I mean, it's all right here uh, in the um, article. It, it is just bizarro. When I drive the Texas highways, I know you see it in your areas of the country, routinely now, I don't see deer on the sides of the roads. I see feral pigs. Why don't they just tell the police when they see them to start shooting them? Oh no, that's terrible. 
If you're worried about this invasive species and they are destructive, don't create a crazy ham-fisted... In fact, let's get this farmer on that Adams was talking to in the article about it. Because all this is doing is giving government under Agenda 21 a way to harass small farmers and ranchers. Kind of like the animal ID, premises ID that was passed uh, federally as a regulation being in, uh, implemented at the state level. They come in and say, you got to have a $10 tag per chicken. But a chicken you can't sell for $10 on average. But big agra, Tyson, has it written where they're exempt. So they got a million chickens at some of their facilities. They can have one tag per building for the chickens. But you have to have a tag for each chicken, which basically bankrupts you. So this is all written by big agra, and that's the story behind the story, the rest of the news, to shut down all of these free-range uh, pig farms. And again, they're fenced in. It, it, it would be a reasonable regulation uh, to say, hey, you've got to make sure that your fences are properly containing them. But these wild pig populations have gotten big just from pigs you know, escaping for the last 200 years. And because humans aren't controlling them, that's why this is happening. But again, they are taking a complex issue and basically uh, just boiling it down and saying, we're now going to come arrest you, give you felony charges and do this. If your pigs look like they're wild, even if they're in pens. Just amazing. In fact, guys, do this. Search this term right now for folks. Uh, search the term breeds of domesticated pig and then click Google images and you will see breeds from England, the United States, from Europe, from Asia, most of them have hair that you can see. Even the pink ones have short white hair. Uh, there's several varieties that are pink. But there are hundreds of breeds and subbreeds that have black hair. There's one right there that have red hair. Uh, you, you can see that classic domesticated pink pig has hair. See that piglet has hair. Now there is a domesticated pig that's gone wild. But that is nevertheless not a wild boar or a Russian boar, which is what pigs are bred out of to begin with. Uh, look at those guys. Now they're considering that, uh, see those? That, that's what the feral hogs in East Texas look just like that. But that, th that is the exact same genetics as the pink pigs above. Now they're saying they're gonna kill those, all right. I always tend to go into great detail on any subject because uh, complex issues need complex uh, descriptions. But this, this is a giant new form of oppression and tyranny in our society and needs to be spoken out against. Now, this happens more and more often here on the Nightly News where a piece of propaganda deployed against the American people is so over the top, I don't have words to describe it. It is so cartoonish that it's an example of propaganda that someone would produce to expose ridiculous propaganda. It's so over the top that even AOL News and many other uh, publications had to say, this is propaganda. In fact, you can see it right there. Uh, Katy Perry, part of me, pop star's military-inspired video called Propaganda. No kidding. This is the most utterly transparent garbage I've ever seen. And when you see movies like The Battle of L.A., the whole thing is a Marine Corps recruiting ad where we're the good guys fighting space aliens because we've run out of brown people to kill. And again, I'm not bashing the Marines themselves, but the endless propaganda that this empire pushes, that our captured country by Goldman Sachs is pushing, the Marines aren't ours anymore. They belong to the globalists. They're being used to do that. And there's a big push through Private Lynch, remember, uh, it turned out she really didn't kill all those Iraqis. She cowered in fear, but they ordered her to go along with the lie to try to recruit women as the heroes. We see it in all the movies, like Prometheus coming out, the, the hero's a woman, and in the, the 79 Alien movies, she's the hero, and G.I. Jane, and, and I mean, every movie I go see now, the women are the heroes, the men are metrosexual idiots. This is what we're being sold. And it's not being done to empower women. I'm going to explain this in a moment. 
But before we do that, I want to show you some excerpts of the video. You can go online and just type in Katy Perry Marine commercial. And her boyfriend is cheating on her. So she shows him she shaves her head and joins the Marines. And then she gets there and he sends her a letter asking her back. But she says no and tears it up and puts on her war paint with her M16 and is just dominating everybody. She's an incredible warrior. She's got the uh, all blue, uh, UNized American flag. Again, she goes in and shows him though. She goes to the recruiter. Oh, look at that bumper sticker. All women are created equal. Then some become Marines. I, I, I mean, this is pure propaganda. So she cuts her hair off. She goes, she joins it. This is nothing but a disgusting recruitment ad for women. You have no future, you know, you're desperate. Well, join us, uh, we'll, we'll show you how to be a Marine because they're getting everybody ready for women on the front line. That's what this is all about. And she gets tough with the other ladies. Soon she'll be like Janet Napolitano or Elena Kagan or Janet Reno. She's got the Janet Reno haircut now. She's gonna you know, be able to hang out, I guess, with Kagan. And it's just incredibly exciting that she gets the letter uh, saying that, that he's sorry and he loves her, but she doesn't buy it. She tears it up. And now she's out there, you know, going through all the training and now she's patrolling some country. Now she's an incredible warrior. Now she's in the water choking some guy. I mean, this is all just the, the, the most ridiculous garbage the world could ever see. Well, let me give a little news flash. Uh, to Katy Perry and, and everybody else. Your young daughter who admires somebody like this stooge. Katy Perry is going to be sitting in her luxury, you know, 20 bedroom house in Los Angeles, sipping on the finest wine while you join a military where they don't even keep the bathrooms working on the aircraft and they have all sorts of, of, uh, lice infestations, and where they have one doctor per thousand Marines uh, in the hospital, uh, when in World War II it was one doctor per 50, and you're going to be having your arms and legs cut off instead of doing surgery if there's an infection. You're going to be injected with deadly vaccines. You're going to be used as a guinea pig. Uh, you're not going to get your death benefits if you're killed. You're going to be absolutely used in these imperial wars. And you're going to be used as a camp prostitute by the men, on average, that are in the military. Just record numbers of rapes going on. You're going to breathe depleted uranium that was illegal to use until about 22 years ago that they know reduces your life span by a massive amount. And as you die <clears throat> decades later from the deadly vaccines, the cancer viruses, the DU, you're not going to be given medical treatment. So as they implode the economy, they are now selling women joining the military. Here's the final analysis. Join the military in a man-hating exercise when you're actually going to go into a world dominated by men and you're going to be basically a camp slave uh, of the men uh, who run the New World Order. Okay, so that's what's going on here. And it targets women loving to put makeup on. So it, it, it subliminally puts that in. Again, it shows her choking the man underwater. It's all a man hating exercise. But when you actually get into the military, you're going to find out that's not what it is. This is the most cold blooded, sickening, Marine Corps financed, cynical fraud you could ever imagine. And it's about forcing giant numbers of women into the military to actually change its culture and to change the culture of women. Now, I want to give you some background uh, information on what's been done to women in the past. Edward Bernays, who's the father of modern advertising and propaganda, he literally wrote the book Propaganda. Joseph Goebbels, on record, the Nazi propaganda minister, used a lot of his information and, and, and twisted it to his own designs. Bernays was the chief psychological warfare expert for more than 20 years, advising the Department of War. He, he advised them to call it defense, don't be honest anymore. Call it the Department of Defense because you're actually gonna run giant imperial slaughter operations. He's the guy, they couldn't sell pork bellies because they were seen as trash meat, bacon. So he ran a nationwide campaign saying, women, your husband doesn't know best, you know best, Women all know 
that pork uh, bellies, bacon, has to be had with eggs. Women know best. So women all ran out and got pork bellies that had only been used to flavor soups and things in the past. You know, throw a piece of bacon in with your green beans to flavor them so that they could jack up the price of pork bellies. Women totally bought it. See, Hitler said, first you get the women, then you've got the children, so follow the men. 80 plus percent of advertising targets women because women make most of the purchases. And if you can get the women, it's not that women are stupid. It's that women are the core of the family, the household, and the civilization. And, and, and so if you can get women, you've got the children. So follow the men. And so Hitler, of course, got that from Joseph Goebbels, who got it from Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays uh, was hired by the tobacco companies and paid millions of dollars a year to target women. Millions in 1920s money because women saw it as unladylike to smoke cigarettes. And they said, look, half the market is not smoking cigarettes. And by the way, they knew back then it was creating lung cancer. They even talked about, hey, this will reduce population as well. I mean, they knew 100 years ago it was giving people cancer. They were doing rat studies over 100 years ago. And so they ran ads in newspapers and on radio saying, don't let men tell you you can't smoke. Show them you're in charge as a flapper. And they paid all the major uh, women's suffrage groups who just gotten the right to vote and things, they said, smoke your liberty torches. And there's photos of women walking around with their cigarettes, smoking them, saying, I'll smoke one if I want. I'm a lady and I'm in charge and I make my own decisions. Now, again, go back down to that poster right there. And uh, again, I want to show people what that says, because these were put up in subways. They were put up at train stations. They were put up everywhere. An ancient prejudice has been removed. And it goes on to say, it's toasted. Lucky strikes, you show that man you're in charge. Yeah, you show grandma dying of lung cancer, tens of millions of women dead. Boy, you really showed them, didn't you? A manipulative man gamed you hardcore. You like hating men? Look, the truth is men and women at the, at the slave surf level are being divided from each other because they want Katy Perry to teach your little girls that the state, let's go back to that video, that the state is your man. The state is your beau. Under this system, women owe their allegiance to the state. What did another feminist say close to, what, 90 years ago in public letters? Margaret Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, said, we have got to break up these families. We've got to get women working in these factories. How do we do it? We sell them the idea that they're rebelling against their husband by doing this. Miss Magazine, on record, Gloria Steinem admits, she wrote in one of her books, look it up, that she was hired by the CIA to go in and to get women to say, raising your kids isn't good. Being at home, the most important area of the, of the life, you know, isn't important. Go to work. That way they can tax the man and the woman. That way the state gets the children. That way they can break down normal human culture and make the state God. Margaret Sanger went on, look this up, to break down how they had to get women to see men as the enemy. And again, she went on to say, we'll use blacks because they're the weakest group, they're the poorest group, they're the most institutionalized group. At that time, just being 70 years or so out of slavery in the 1860s, she said, what we'll do is just like we had the old system of the women were brought into the house. You're getting the big secret of feminism right now. Just like the house slave was always a woman and the men were kept out in the barn and weren't allowed to read or write, we're going to set women up as the minders of society again. There's actually Roman handbooks on this from 2,000 years ago where they talk about, with white slaves at that time, mainly from Western Europe, you bring in the slaves, you kill a couple of the men in front of the women, you even kill some of the kids, and you tell the women, it's your job to keep these men in line or we're going to kill all of you. 
and they found that women, believing they were protecting people, would become incredible oppressors and tattletales over the men. And then within a few generations, they started enjoying the oppression and didn't even do it to, quote, protect the men. And I was reading about how they retranslated those Roman documents from Latin into French and then into English uh, by the 1820s or so uh, in the sugarcane plantations. I'm giving you history here. Heavy truth, folks. The sugarcane plantations of the Caribbean, they would bring a ship of slaves in. Already half of them on average from Africa would have died in the trip over because uh, they didn't really feed them from Africa. And they'd get them off the coffin ship and then they would kill the most well-spoken, obvious leader just from body language and things of the blacks that was alive in front of the women. They'd beat their brains out or they would hang them and they'd tell the women, we're going to kill all your male children if you don't keep everybody in line. Is that understood? And they found the women would do whatever they were told. So that's where you get the mammy in all the Three Stooges movies and stuff, bossing the black guys around, and in all the old movies that are still you know, representing what really happened in history, where, where the black woman is, is in charge, and she's got the big, you know, big mammy outfit on, Aunt Jemima, and she's in there telling those black men, you do what you're told. In fact, in this culture, it got so dominant that my father, when he would pick cotton, and he did pick cotton, uh, even though he came from a middle-class family, he was sent out to pick cotton, that he would go out and pick cotton on adjacent, uh, on adjacent farms and that they had groups of black people out there picking the cotton. And do you know who the bosses were? Giant, powerful black women. And they were even bossing the poor whites around. Now, that's what my dad grew up in East Texas. And my dad's only, what, 63 years old, okay? My dad grew up with a black woman foreman telling the poor whites what to do. Now, that's a, that, 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 that is that culture, ladies and gentlemen. And I've read in the history diaries about breeding programs in this country where they would actually single out the most aggressive, largest black women. This goes back 200 years. You can look this up. This is the history you're not supposed to know to be the dominant people. So that's all Katy Perry and all this is. That's what feminism is. In fact, there's Margaret Sanger to the KKK. Show them that. That's powerful. In fact, we'll give people a full screen of that. I'm begging you. That's a real photo. To look into this now. When your wife comes home and dresses you down and tells you she's the boss, she's reading government propaganda developed in Rome 2,000 years ago to make women the slave masters. They call them the house slaves. They have an obnoxious term when it's blacks. The house, you know what's. And so let me expand on this, giving you the deep truth here. That's why in the 60s, blacks were demanding their liberty because they'd gone to war in World War II. They had their own communities, their own wealth. Illegitimacy was much lower than it is now. Crime rates much lower. And they said, Margaret Sanger and others, had developed the program. They said, what we'll do is we'll get them on welfare and we'll tell them, you can't have a man in the house who'll give you money. And we'll reinstitute re the house slave model. And that's what they've created now. And uh, black men are told, just like white men and everybody else, to be lethargic, don't work, be a gangster, just get women pregnant all day, that you're winning when you do that, when you don't take care of your kids. This is now being exported back where it came from with German and Gaulish slaves in Rome 2,000 years ago. Started out with whites. This was done to whites. And now it's being done to blacks. And now they've beta tested it on blacks and they're rolling it out. So Margaret Sanger, Glorious Steitem, uh, the idiot K uh, Katy Perry doesn't know what she's doing. She's just paid by the Marines to do this, so does it. I mean, she's obviously doesn't have, you know, two brain cells rubbed together. I mean, just look in her eyes. She's got one-way eyes. But when you look at the snake eyes of a Margaret Sanger or the devil eyes of a Gloria Steinem, they know how to run savage ops on our families. And they've devastated things. Uh, blacks were, depending on what area, 30% illegitimate, 40% illegitimate. When you are illegitimate, that means you're three to four times more likely to be in prison or involved in crime. Now blacks are 92% illegitimate. Uh, whites are 50% illegitimate now. Uh, Hispanics are about the same number as whites. And you can just see it, society totally falling apart, totally crumbling. And so I just want to right now say to Gloria Steinem and to the Ku Klux Klan 
and to uh, uh, Margaret Sanger there with the Klan, who the liberals worship. I want to say you've done a great job. You have really screwed people up. And of course, uh, they've also got the liberals uh, who aren't really liberals that are Klan members. Uh, they've got them doing a great job where blacks get all upset when the media you know, talks about Trayvon Martin and some questionable event to get everybody at each other's throats. So, they, so the liberals can pose as their saviors while they're busy killing 52% of black folks before they're born. You can't get black folks excited about that because the media and Wolf Blitzer didn't say so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've gone deeply now into the uh, secrets uh, of what's going on with Katy Perry. Part of me, that disgusting, fetid, anti-human garbage. L let me explain something. Defeating the New World Order starts one place. When men and women understand that a man is not whole and a woman is not whole. Humanity is a man and woman. Humanity is the interface of man and woman. And that's why the system attacks marriage and man and woman and makes it like some bigoted anti-civil rights thing when you say marriage is very important. Breeding between lions is important. Breeding between blue whales is important. Fire ant breeding is important. They're attacking through a scientific dictatorship the institution of humanity itself and packaging it as some civil rights crusade. Invade Africa to help the black people. Coney 2012, manifest fraud. Margaret Sanger and Katy Perry, women, let's get the men, let's join the Marines in some feminist exploit. Let's invade and take over the military. You'll show the men, you'll choke them out. This is only one phase right now, but they do want to make most of the peacekeepers women. A bunch of Elena Kagans with machine guns waddling around. I mean, it's a nightmare system. And, and people need to see it. Women, you've not been empowered by feminism. You've been turned into sexual objects who don't have any time to have any time off or to be appreciated for what you really are. You've been lied to about women's position in society throughout history. You are the society. You are the, the, the creatures, the, uh, the more dominant of the two. You create and grow the next life. And they tell you, oh, that's a horrible thing. The feminists say your baby is a parasite. They don't ever want you to really have a child so you're empowered through it. And they want your child drinking a bunch of Coca-Cola and McDonald's, bouncing off the walls, screwed up, so that you don't understand what your child would have really been. They, they are attacking us so they can rewrite our society. Speaking of Margaret Sanger wanting to exterminate blacks and being worshipped in every liberal publication as a loving liberal, here are some numbers. You can go check these out for yourself. Approximate number of African-American deaths since 1973. AIDS, 292,000 here in the United States. Violent crimes, 306,000. Accidents, 370,000. Cancer, 1.6 mil. Heart disease, 2.2 mil. Abortion, 11,156,700. And then that number's a couple years old. That's through uh, 2001, so you know. I guess it's probably like more like 15, 16 million now if you follow the graphs we've got. And, and Margaret Sanger said, we got to kill these people. You can pull the quotes up. I just showed you her at the Klan rallies. And, and by the way, when I did Endgame, I didn't just, and, and we didn't even end up putting all that in there, but in the research, I had Aaron Dykes ride off to the universities to get, and to pay to have the actual microfilm photographed, and we showed it on air at the time, to show her actual letters, copies of them. Saying, we, how do we kill these black subhuman weeds? Those are quotes. We pose as liberals, we buy off the black leadership. And they worked out plans to have the black leadership always stir blacks and whites up against each other, pose as their friends. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton on the MSNBC, you know, trendy channel. Again, real racists like Margaret Singer are like, I love you, black. Behind the scenes, murder them, murder them. And again, I come out and cover this, and I've seen uh, folks that saying they're black on my YouTube channel when I point out this Trayvon Martin thing is a media hoax. It, the whole event's a hoax. Whatever the truth is, it's a hoax to get us fighting with each other. And they're like, I knew you were a racist. Good then. Go ahead, okay? Go have a couple more abortions. Kill some black babies. I'm the bad guy. You're the people buying in to the New World Order's propaganda, and the women are the ones buying in to hating their men and thinking they're you know getting at 
a leg up on somebody watching MTV they think's their friend. And men that think it's cool to act like idiots all day and act like fools because the TV shows tell them to. You're idiots too. It's time for everybody to get wise to this propaganda, and I'm sick of it. As for the Trayvon Martin situation, it has now come out that he's got a bunch of black friends for years who say that he's not racist and they come over and watch football and all the rest of the stuff and go to the gym and hang out. That's all on record. And now I saw it on the news this morning. A black neighbor, a black teenager is on ABC News going, no, the guy with the hoodie was on top, the other guy in the red shirt, the neighbor, beating him in the face. I mean, I've got all these clips. It's all right there. I'm not saying it's good that the guy even followed him. I get the fact that he was walking while black. That part's wrong. He's going to get the Skittles or whatever, and he's walking back, and the guy is an overzealous neighborhood watch guy, Zimmerman, who's called the 911 like 90-something times. I get all that. But he approaches him, and reportedly, Trayvon turned around and then you know, got an altercation with him. Not smart to bring fists to a gunfight. But the whole spectacle about the media and, and, and all of this is to get us at each other's throats. And, you know, it's coming out now that he had burglary tools at school and all this other stuff. I, I don't know. I know people that have been pulled over and cops have asked, what's that? And they go, it's a screwdriver. And they ask him if it's a burglary tool. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I was called in the high school office once and asked if I was robbing stereos. And I said, you know full well I have no criminal record. I said to the cop, I know you've been dealing drugs. That's why you're calling me in here. And he grabbed me and slammed my head into the table and said, yeah, you better shut up or you're going to go to prison. And then said a bunch of racist stuff about black people. So I get the fact that there's racism out there. He said, uh, black guys uh, are going to rape you and give you AIDS is actually what the white cop told me. But side issue. The point is, I know that that stuff's going on. Okay. I'm not defending that. The point is all getting together and, 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 and now there's whites are being attacked and all over the country. I read about public fairs and parks and events where black folks are now attacking white people. And, 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 and now uh, there in Miami, uh, it looks like about 80, you know, mainly black kids run in and grab and steal a bunch of stuff as part of a Trayvon Martin protest uh, at a uh, Walgreens. I mean, this is the type of stuff going on. My final point is this on this Trayvon Martin subject. Remember Jesse Jackson, remember Al Sharpton and the lacrosse players? They were white, therefore the devil. Did they ever apologize when it turned out that was all made up? Now, I think this case is more complex and Zimmerman may have been in the wrong. And if that's the case, he should be punished. I'm not debating that. It's that when mainstream media tells everybody to get at each other's throats, you gotta ask why is that happening? And why is Obama trying to use this as his re-election campaign tool? It's disgusting. All right, that's what I have to say on that subject. Moving right along here, we're like three stories into this now. Only 30 minutes in here. Fear of radiation treated as psychiatric disorder. And this is what they do with troops that get sick from depleted uranium use. They tell them you're mentally ill. Well, now five reactors blow up, incredible radiation sickness, they're now just saying, here, take Prozac or we're going to lock you up. So your kids got blood pouring out of them, you know, so their heart stops from radiation poisoning. Big deal. It's good for you. This is after the government's been caught lying over and over and over again about the radiation levels. And now they're just saying it's fine. And if you don't like it, uh, you're mentally ill. That's my problem with nuclear power is these companies don't even care if they have crises now. They just raise the level of radiation that government says is safe, and then supposedly everything's fine. Okay, getting into another area now. Man arrested, charged with assault for pointing finger at the police, and the gentleman that they arrested, they're calling it assault and a threat, has no criminal record, says he was pulling his cigarettes out, and they arrested him, and you've got to love the spokeswoman for the police there in Fredericksburg. Uh, I mean, she is really getting off on this. Uh, this new thing where if you point your finger, you're going to go to jail, or you film the police, you're going to go to jail. I mean, this is like something out of North Korea. Let's go ahead and go to this clip. A pointed finger lands a father in jail. That's right, and this Fredericksburg man, in fact, says he didn't even point his finger at police officers, but now he faces two felony charges. Gail Huff is live from Fredericksburg tonight with the details on this story. Gail. 
Well, police say he pointed a finger like this, and that felt very threatening to them. In fact, he ended up arrested, charged with assault. He made the motion of shooting at the officers with his with his hand. That's enough. David Lawless is accused of pointing. That's enough. He made the motion of shooting at the officer with his hands, and she's like, hmm. And I'm casting to play the Wicked Witch. And then later she's like, the court is going to hear this. Mm. There's a lot of private prisons. We've got a cr jam cram full of the slaves. I mean, is there no end to these people? So there you have it, land of the cowards, home of the slaves. Uh, uh, here's another one. City may sell historic landmarks. That's out of WJZ CBS television. More than a dozen historic landmarks in Baltimore may be up for sale soon. Sell off parks, sell off buildings. I, I love how in Rhode Island and Michigan, they're just saying foreign banks now own the town and there's no more city council and they're going to take your property or raise taxes and then you pay all that to foreign banks who don't even really owe the town or, or own the town. They're just taking the town over. So it's all part of this privatization of fraud. Very, very dangerous. And the same thing's happening in Greece under austerity. The Goldman Sachs fraudsters actually appoint the presidents and prime ministers now. The same thing in Italy. And they say, we're raising your taxes, we're cutting your funds. That further implodes the economy, keeping them from ever getting back on their feet. Now they're selling off the Greek islands, national parks, uh, everything. It is just off the charts crazy that all of this is happening. But if you thought that you'd heard it all, you haven't yet. There's even more to the lavish police state rollout. DHS raids home to seize deadly hair straighteners. And we link to the article in the Orange County Register that's reporting on it like this is all completely normal. And the Department of Homeland Security, a federal agency created in the aftermath of 9-11 to fight terrorism, has continued its war on potentially deadly grooming appliances by raiding a home in the affluent Orange County city of Laguna Nigella, I guess I'm pr pronouncing that wrong, to seize alleged counterfeit hair straighteners. And of course, uh, remember, they've got $15 million fines now uh, for garage sales if you're selling a recalled item. It's okay for China to ship in stuff with lead and mercury in it or whatever, but then if you unknowingly resell it for a dollar, $15 million fine. And the Amish are being attacked, lemonade stands. It's all about the slaves not having any type of business uh, on the side. It's about making the, quote, black market or underground market completely illegal. Speaking of the police state, one more little, little juicy tidbit. We, we, we'll have to stop here because there's so many others. Uh, kids all over America are being put on buses and sent to alternative locations during school drills. I first reported this 14 years ago, and people didn't believe it. They take them to FEMA centers. They've got military there sometimes with machine guns. The parents aren't allowed to know where they go in many cases. Uh, it is just incredible. In fact, if we pull up the actual article from the American Dream site, they have a photo of school buses being brought in to behind the barbed wire uh, and uh, the military standing around them. So uh, this is being done. And, and, and now to get your kids out of school, you thumbprint, you go through databases. It's all teaching you that the state controls uh, your children. Uh, in California, they're now giving inoculations to school children without their parents' consents and, and saying in court that the state uh, controls all of the children and that the state has more of a parentship or guardianship than the parents do. Yeah, there's a, a photo of it. Isn't that nice? Don't you enjoy being taken into the loving little FEMA camp center? all part of training your children to be prisoners. All right, we're going to go to this in-depth report with Darren McBreen uh, and other uh, cohorts from the InfoWars crew, like Patrick Henningsen, reporter for InfoWars.com, and our own John Bound. Then I'm going to come back with the quote of the day. Please stay with us. I'm announcing our biggest contest ever. And we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in, in the resistance to tyrants. So you say you want to fight the new world order. Why, if you were on the radio, if you were Alex Jones, you'd really kick some globalist ass. Well, here's your chance. We're hiring not one, but two new reporters. 
whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube, and you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important. But we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you gonna join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. Have you seen the Coney 2012 video? Yes! What do you think about that? Is that... That's, he needs to be arrested, but I believe everybody, like, they saw that video and all of a sudden they became an activist. Yes. But they don't care after, like, two days. Have you seen the uh, Coney 2012 video? Absolutely. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about that? Should we go after him or do you think it's propaganda? I think he, he's got real crimes, but I'm not sure what they're proposing is really going to fix it. I just think it's sad that it took this long for everybody to know about this guy. I've known for, about this guy for a long time, and it's just really sad that it took this video for everybody to know about him. When did you first learn about him? Uh, maybe like, I was in high school. It was like my sophomore year when I started learning about him, and I just, I hate this guy from that day. Have you seen the uh, Coney 2012 viral video? I did not watch it. You didn't watch it? I've seen it, yes. What do you think about it? Uh. I think it's good that it's raising awareness, but it's something that's been going on for like 10 years, decades, and it's upsetting that it's getting publicity now for a specific organization and not for the cause itself. I saw a video from the same organization six years ago. It's like a, it's like a sensation. 
it's all over Facebook and whatnot, whatever too. I mean, it's it's kind of cool. I get I get the cause, but it's a little excessive. awareness of things that are happening in other countries, especially something like what Coney's doing to people or what has been, you know, portrayed that he's doing to people, but we can't be too sure, you know, it's, I feel like I can't really place an opinion on it because I haven't seen it myself, but it's definitely enlightening to hear about it. I think it's a good cause. Okay. I know Invisible Children, and I saw it on 2020, maybe a couple years ago, about how kids would go from Uganda camps and then go to refugee camps so they wouldn't die at night. So I've been familiar with the project for a couple of years, yeah. and actually seeing it on YouTube and actually making people aware of it, I think it's a really good cause. Coney 2012, have you seen the video? Yeah, I have seen it, yeah. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's propaganda, or do you think we should go in there and kick his ass? I think I'm 50-50 about it, actually. I guess the criminal court, you know, yeah. he, he's at the top of the list. You know, he was farther up than, I mean, Gaddafi. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, he's not a good person. What do you think about Angelina Jolie and her involvement in it? Is that cool, or should she mind her own business? I think she should mind her own business, I guess. <laughs> I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> when a, a celebrity that you know, at that status is promoting it, then it gets, it gains more attention, definitely. Definitely, Angelina, get involved! Would you put it past the United States government to use star power, celebrities, and um, propaganda videos such as Coney 2012 to, to drum up American and public support to go into war or uh, to send troops to Uganda, for example? I don't think I would put it beyond them. I don't think, I think that I think that it would be a perfect way to get people into into whatever they can't really promote war the way they used to so this is a better way to get people who are generally who would not really support it yeah. to support it. The Coney uh, obsession is a little excessive. I feel like there are lots of I feel like there are lots of issues in world politics that people don't pay attention to and that for some reason, Coney is getting more attention than everything else that could be more serious. The government's in on this, and they're like covering something else up by putting Coney 2012 like everywhere. Okay, so you heard of Coney 2012? Everybody has. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I just think I would have liked the video up until the end when he started asking for money. So I don't know. I think a lot of youth tend to not do their research and just think tend to fall for anything. So. Um, I think you should really look up all your causes and they, they have some questionable characteristics as far as how much money actually goes to Uganda Good. and I actually I actually have a friend that's from Uganda and she says that you know the rumor there is that Kony has been dead. Now uh, reports from actual Uganda say that they haven't seen Joseph Kony in about six years there's a rumor that he's dead uh, do you think do you think that the Kony 2012 could be uh, something for uh, Obama, let's say, to uh, use this as a kind of a PR platform in order to create a new, a, a new region. I think it's a lot of propaganda, but I do think that if he, I, I do, I believe, from what I've been told, like he's been, he's been, he's been pushed very east of where he was back in the day, and I don't know if he's alive or not. If he's, if he's alive, they probably should kill him. We had a young girl from Uganda on our, our radio show. This is a nationally syndicated radio show. Yesterday, as a matter of fact, she's 16 years old and a very bright girl. And she came on uh, to, she did a viral video herself, which she released on Monday. Uh, it's had about three or four million views. And she said that nobody in Uganda uh, is, is, if Kony is not on the map, he's rumored to have been dead uh, five to six years ago, uh -huh. okay? And that the Lord's Resistance Army is, is no longer a, a military faction, but that they, the Ugandans believe that this is a kind of a PR stunt by Washington. Well, now they're saying it isn't about Kony. They just want to draw attention to him, but they're like, first there was Hitler, then there was bin Laden, now there's Kony. But don't worry, the UN's going to get all these Konies, and there just so happens to be one in every country where they want to bring in military force and we've seen what Western military has done in Africa uh, there what's your view on that I mean do you do you agree with my assessment that this is a pretext to just start invading African countries backing up dictators and others I do believe that I do know how horrible President Museveni is and I also do know that he is an ally to the US government um, I also believe that the fact that they just discovered 
a lot of oil in Uganda on the border of the Congo as well as very appealing to the U.S. and how they're not happy with them trading with China. Um, I just feel like the U.S. always has to put their hands on everything. If the Ugandan government and the Sudanese government and other surrounding Kenya, they can all help out. And if they wanted to stop these things, they could stop them on their own. But all these governments are corrupt on their own. And to have America come in and act as the superhero, they can't because our own government isn't even that stable. A lot of people think it's uh, it's bull that it's, it's just a propaganda campaign to, as an excuse to go into Africa to take advantage of their natural resources. Have you heard, heard anything like that, or what do you think? I have heard that. A lot of people on Facebook have been saying that it's like, it's been going on for a long time, but now that the videos come out, everyone cares about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it is kind of true. I did just watch the video, and now that I know about it, I care about it more. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't say it's like bullshit. Yeah, do you think a lot of people just accept whatever they see and just like, I mean, they, they let their emotions get involved and then, you know, I, I can understand a humanitarian effort, but that could be easily disguised as a reason to go in there and, uh, you know, take advantage. Especially in a video where this guy's kid takes a greater role than any of the victims. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that, like, if you're going to support something, you need to not only look at the people that are campaigning, but also do, like, further research and read articles about the issue. And the organizations behind it. It's called the Invisible Children. Back in 1990, they had the Citizens for Free Kuwait, and they had an actress who said that uh, she saw Saddam Hussein's soldiers dump babies out of Kuwaiti incubators. They used it to drum up support for, you know, America, the average American citizen hated Saddam at that point, and we wanted to go into war. It was all fake. Do you think it's it could be the same thing here with this video? Well, it definitely could. I mean, in the video, he uses a lot of things that makes people like they're really emotional, where they'd want to get involved. Like putting his own child up there and talking about how he would feel if his son got kidnapped, and then talking about his story. Yeah. And it's, it could easily be the same situation. They could have just come up with this idea, just like all this to get people to support them for something that they don't even need to know about. Unlike that 15-year-old girl, Cooney's been on a list, a fugitive list, for I don't know how many years, I think till, since 2005. So I make, I, think, well, I guess I'm more inclined to believe him being a real fugitive than a 15-year-old girl. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. I can only ask how these animals can commit such barbaric and inhuman acts and then deny that these acts ever took place. Premature infants in incubators were sentenced to die by having the incubators removed. The hardest thing was burying the babies. I myself buried 14 newborn babies that had been taken from their incubators. Now is the time to check the aggression of this ruthless dictator whose troops have bayoneted pregnant women and have ripped babies from their incubators in Kuwait. I could not help but think of my nephew, who if born premature might have died that day as well. And they had kids in incubators and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. You're familiar with the first Gulf War. There was a story where um, they brought a young girl to testify in front of Congress, a 15-year-old girl from Kuwait, and she told Congress that they were taking babies and, and throw, out of incubators and throwing them out onto the floor of the hospital. And on that premise, it really helped uh, the public opinion go for the first Gulf War invasion. Do you think it's possible that the Coney 2012 could be a ruse in order to hype up military intervention in Africa. Absolutely, I absolutely think that Coney 2012 is, is a ruse to get American involvement in, in, in Africa. In 1990, uh, there was a PR firm that hired a uh, Kuwaiti girl who's 15. They basically trained her, uh, gave her acting lessons. She went before Congress, cried, it was very emotional and looked very believable that Saddam Hussein was taking babies out of incubators in Kuwait 312 of them, tossed them in the street, and they all died. And I remember being very angry at this. Right. It turned out to be total crap, all made up. It was a PR firm. So 
that's what the Bush administration back then used as an excuse to go to war with Iraq. Yeah, one, one of the reasons. But it was very helpful, you know. So do you think that it's something like Coney 12 should be looked into uh, and investigated before people? Very much so. You totally changed my whole thought process of it all. All right. Well, you rock. I you appreciate rock. it. The 33-year-old creator of Coney 2012, when you go home, you wake up hungover tomorrow, you're going to see it all over the news. He was arrested yesterday in San Diego. He was masturbating in public. He was drunk and he was vandalizing cars. Any sort of his qualifications. I, I mean, bigger leaders have been arrested for weirder things. That doesn't make them any less qualified to be a leader, in my mind. The only good thing to come out of Africa in the last 25 years was Paul Simon's Graceland album. Anything else? Pfft, we out. Is there a difference between the Bush administration and the Obama administration? Not that much. Yeah. So, and a lot of people know that Bush was influenced by propaganda, or not by propaganda, but by big money, you know, by big corporations and all that. Is uh, the Obama administration, uh, could they possibly fall into the same trap? Honestly, <laughs> the government is the government. I don't care how many different parts you have to it, they're all the government. And so, at one point, they all have to come together, correct? Right. And so, basically, I mean, if I know Obama's a Democrat and you have your Republicans, but put them together, they all vote on the same thing when it all comes down to it. Do you think there's any difference between the Obama administration and the and the Bush administration? No, yeah. no, 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 none with it all. We've actually, we've taken the uh, uh, Obama, uh, we've taken the Bush doctrine and have adapted it to the Obama. So you're right when you say we have adapted the same administration over and over and over again. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah, there's no difference. I mean, where do you think he gets his money for these campaigns that he's doing right now? It's not all Democrats. It's not all people that are meaning to do well, man. Well, it's so. a lot of the big bankers that supported his campaign, you know? Right, I mean, right, right. Now, he appointed the, the people with the whole bailout and things of that nature. He advised, uh, appointed some of the advisors on his campaign. He, they're working with him now. So come on, man. You mean to tell me that doesn't even make sense? You think we have enough troops already uh, deployed overseas? Yeah, I think it's gross. I don't. I don't think we're imposing our our uh, military factions on people that aren't asking for it. I think it is a bit of a ploy for American troops to maybe intervene a little bit. Probably somebody else to find. You know, ever since uh, Bin Laden, you know, probably find another excuse to go somewhere else and find somebody who's who's a threat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We'll always need a boogeyman as an excuse, right? Exactly. Well, as you can see, a lot of people are starting to wake up to the fact that they are repackaging war propaganda as liberal and trendy, and uh, the population of this country, by and large, is not buying the 1984 adage that war is peace. I want to leave you with this quote this evening by Akira Kurosawa, Japanese uh, film director of legendary renown. He said, in a mad world, only the mad are sane. And I can give you a few other uh, quotes, one from George Arwell, uh, that in a world of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And then there's another one I'll probably butcher, and I forget who said it, you can look it up, but that uh, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. There's kind of a parable along those lines of the wise king woke up one day and an evil witch had poisoned the well in the, in, the, in the town. And so everyone had been turned evil. So the wise king went and drank from the well and became mad and evil. And so there was balance because now everyone was crazy. Kind of like everybody in Nazi Germany thought what they were doing was okay, but it wasn't. A lot of people in America think it's okay what's going on, but just because some people think evil's okay doesn't make it okay. I think that king should have pulled up stakes and moved to a new area instead of drinking from the poison well. And that quote of in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king was Erasmus of Rotterdam from around the date 1510, so 502 years ago. Well, 
the Google NSA search engine has some uses after all. That's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. David Icke was supposed to be on tonight, but he's traveling, and there was a snafu. He'll probably be with us uh, tomorrow night. I was looking forward to that. Great job to the crew, and great job to all of you out there that are subscribers. If you're watching this by the millions uh, that watch it every week out there on the web. Think about subscribing to see it first when it airs. All of my films, uh, the daily radio show, video feed, and so much more, because in the month of April, we mark nine years of PrisonPlanet.tv. We've got a 15-day free trial running right now. So if you're out there watching in Internet land, be sure and subscribe at PrisonPlanet.tv to support the very front lines of the info war, true alternative media exposing the dinosaur corporate whore media. All right, folks, we'll see you back, Lord willing, tomorrow night.